my name is Julie. Um, so my first video was about the NARBC reptile show, um, but I didn't actually do a welcome to my channel. I'm Julie video. So we're doing that as video number two. Um, so welcome to my channel. Um, my channel is called the Paleo Zuseum. Um, what the heck that means uh, is all the things that I love. Um, so paleontology, that's the paleo part. Paleo means ancient, so ancient life, uh, geologic past. Um, the zoo and zoosium is obviously about zoos and zoology. Um, and zium is because of museums. Um, I love museums. Um, I wanted to work in one. So that's how I kind of came up with that. Um, it's just all things that I like. So if you like what I like, um, you're like this channel. So what my channel is going to be about um, is about me and my husband, Matt, um, and our lives with our pets. Um, and then also different things I've learned um, through my schooling and through experiences. And our other goals are to educate on different aspects of paleontology and zoology and geology and science. Um, we're big science people. So that's what we want our channel to be about. So also part of this video, I'm gonna show you a few of my pets just to you know entice you with that you know front image of, of meeting my pets. Um, I'm only showing you a couple. Um, so you have to keep watching the channel to meet the rest of them. So I'm definitely gonna showcase my animals and anything cool about them, um, tips about their care. Um, and then I want to do kind of a segment where I kind of mush my passions of um, you know, paleontology and pet keeping. Um, so I want to do like segments about keeping a, a living fossil, basically. Um, so if you like, you know, titanoboa, you know, what what animal you should get if, if you want like a titanoboa in your life. Um, if you're, you know, into really weird fossil things, like what could be the modern equivalent that you could keep? I also have some cool friends that do cool animal and paleontology things across the country. It'd be really cool to interview them. Obviously, I haven't talked to you guys about it if you're watching it, but I'm coming for you. We're going to talk about your cool jobs because I'm jealous. So I'm going to probably do like a ask a paleontologist, ask a zoologist type section. I would like to also do museum and zoo reviews. Um, every vacation I go on is just revolves around zoos and museums. And I have so many videos and so many pictures. Um, I think I can offer some good insight into, you know, what's not to miss at that zoo or if you should even go to that museum, um, et cetera. And of course I'll do show videos because I go to the shows a lot. So I've gone to bird shows, um, reptile shows, uh, rock shows. I don't think there's a lot of rock show uh, videos um, yet in the pet tube. Uh, community, but I can definitely do that because I'm into rocks. I love rocks. I also want to talk about, you know, my college experience. I've gone to three different types of colleges, the basic public college, um, a specialized STEM public college, and then a Big Ten school. Um, just how their differences are. So that way if you're choosing colleges, you know, what it's like and what's like to be kind of in each of those settings because um, I definitely have a preference out of those three. So things to know about me uh, before we sign up for this channel is I have several degrees. Um, I have two bachelors of science degrees, one in geology, so study rocks, and one in zoology, study of animals. Um, I have, from that university, uh, a, a minor in museum studies. And then I went on to get a master's in paleontology, and then I'm working on another master's in earth and environmental science. Um, it's a little smattering of all natural sciences. So my husband Matt has a similar background. He has degrees in chemistry and zoology as his bachelor's with a minor in math and then he also has a master's of education um so yeah in this family we love education we want to educate on all things that we find cool and interesting um and how to take care of animals and stuff like that so my background um i volunteered at the brookfield zoo um, while i was in high school in a program called the youth volunteer corps so yvc if you are a teenager um in high school and you would like to you know kind of get zoo experience um that is a wonderful program. Um, so there I, uh, you not only do interpretation of exhibits with like skulls um, and different like fur and, and different props, um, teach people about the animals at the zoo and about conservation. Um, there's also a little side track um, called science track, <laughs> so creative, um, where you, the first year you come up with a science project um, based on obs observation. The second year, uh, you get paired with a zookeeper. Um, you do, you pretty much follow them around. Um, you get to take care of the animals, clean up after the animals. Um, you definitely have free labor for them, but it's actually really fun. What's really cool about that, um, you know, program at the zoo was that you would present your work um, at the end of the year to the actual, like, board um, of Brookfield Zoo, and that was pretty neat. Uh, the first year was just like a poster science fair, and the second year was actual talk. 
Um, so I have given a talk at Brookfield Zoo. It was pretty cool. Um, it's a wonderful resume builder if you're a high school student that wants to get into zoology. Uh, so me and my husband actually got married at Brookfield Zoo too. Um, so our theme was a science theme wedding. So we had molecules and beakers. Um, we had a unity volcano. But we got married in front of the dolphins um, and then had our cocktail hour type thing in the swamp at that zoo. Um, so yeah, our whole lives pretty much revolve around our animals. So I've basically had reptiles my entire life. Um, so I got my first reptile when I was eight. Um, and then my parents were really cool and supportive. And so I had about like five or six reptiles growing up at my house along with some other animals. So they were really, you know, supporting my dream of working with animals. So me and my husband live um, in a house. Um, so when you have a big collection of animals like we do, you kind of have to have a house. It's, it's kind of um, just easier when you have a big space for them. Um, we converted our three car garage into our temperature controlled reptile room. Um, that's where I'm in right now. Um, so we have basically like brace cages and, and other PVC cages and then some custom built ones. Um, and then, of course, smaller tanks for smaller things. Um, our basement also has animals. Um, so the entire basement floor um, is dedicated to mostly our birds um, and then some mammals. Uh, mammals take up a smaller portion of, of what animals we have. Um, so a lot of our animals are rescues. Um, we'd prefer to work with breeders um, directly either at shows or, or through contacts. Um, or rescue them from shelter situations. Um, we have done a few Craigslist saves. Um, my iguana, which you can see his cage right there, um, it was actually a Craigslist save. He is really stunted in growth. Um, I've also worked at a pet store. Um, fortunately for you guys, it's a chain pet store, which I know is very taboo, um, but I am helping the general public um, be educated in what they're getting um, and what products to get. So I do feel good about that. So I have my perspective on that that I can kind of share. Um, I do know pet products from like every chain, like the back of my hand. So, um, so yeah, I can always offer stuff on that for you guys. Um, another thing you should know about me is I'm pretty awkward. Um, I'm pretty quirky. I'm pretty weird. Um, so I'm probably just going to sing about animals at some point. Um, not very well, um, but I'm that type of person. I've done a lot of paleontology. I've gotten a lot of digs. Um, mostly in Utah, um, some in South Dakota, North Dakota. Um, it's pretty cool. If you're going to be a paleontologist in college, look for externship and internship programs early on. Um, I was lucky and got an externship for spring break my senior year, where I was paired with the Natural History Museum of Utah. I got to go out on a dig with them um, in Canyonlands uh, National Park. At my first master's, I worked with uh, fossil amphibians. Um, and kind of was just looking at the diversity of a certain locality um, in the Badlands of North Dakota. So yeah, I've worked with dinosaurs, birds, uh, mammals, and reptiles, and fossils. My other backgrounds are in museums. I worked in a lot, or I have worked in a lot of museums. Um, I've worked at my university museums um, at two of my universities. And then I've also interned at the Field Museum of Chicago a few times. Um, for that one, it was paleontology stuff. So this is Ace. He is a blizzard blue tegu. Um, I have four tegus. Um, he is a really sweet dude. Um, I've taken him to see Santa. He's a very nice, handable animal. Of course, he's going to jiggle as soon as I say that. Um, but he's very beautiful, very gorgeous. I'm trying to breed him with my other uh, weird tegu, which I'm sure I'll talk about in the future. So this is another one of my tegus. Um, tegus are my favorite lizard, um, so that's why I have four of them. Um, this guy you might actually know from a different channel. Um, he's internet famous for I was. Um, I didn't know that when I adopted him. Um, I saw him at Snake Discovery. Um, we live fairly close to that store. Um, so this is uh, another YouTube channel. They called him Flick, and that was his adopted name. We might keep that, um, but I also thought Clifford, because he's a big red dog, basically. But everyone keeps calling him Flick here, so he just might, might wind up being Flick. But anyway, he's a red tegu. Um, he, his growth is stunted, um, so he is full grown at this point. He's a cute little guy though. He has a lot of medical kind of issues going on. So he needed an experienced keeper to take care of him. Um, since I had a bunch of experience with tegus, they were happy to adopt him out to us and we're happy to have him. He's such a sweet little guy. Uh, but yeah, so we have to give him a bunch of baths for all of his shedding problems. Um, he has missing toes from his previous home. Um, so this is what we do to help Flick with his shedding problems. Um, so we make a nice warm bath. Um, of course, we use 
some nice Reptisafe in there to make sure it's healthy for the reptiles and takes out the heavy metals and chlorine. Um, I also put some electrolytes uh, in there for him just because uh, red tegus tend to have more problems with uh, dehydration than other tegus. Um, they require higher humidity. So just make sure you have some electrolytes in there. So we're going to let him soak in that. And then we can try to kind of work off a little bit of the skin. I don't like to fully pull skin off unless it's ready, so we're not going to pull on it. Um, but for his fingers, which some are still kind of in the process of falling off from his previous home, uh, we're going to apply this on there um, just to make sure that he stays healthy and doesn't get infected or anything. Uh, but yeah, we're going to let him sit in that and then kind of work off some of his dead skin. He already has dirt coming off and, and everything. Another benefit of giving your reptiles baths is this is often the place where they're going to poop. So a lot of your desert animals uh, don't get a lot of water just because they're desert animals. If you put them in a bath to get a little bit of rehydration, um, they're likely going to poop in your bath in their bath. All right, so the next animal that I'm showing you from my collection is this sweet little funny guy here. He is a red collared lorikeet. Um, so he's, yeah, he also talks. I don't know what he's saying right now. He is very similar to the rainbow lorikeets you see in zoos where you feed, yeah, I'm not gonna shut up, bud. Um, where you, <laughs> where you feed the lorikeets nectar. Um, and so yeah, he only eats nectar. We have to make him his nectar every night. Except the thing is we personally aren't making his nectar. He ma makes the nectar himself. Um, he refuses to eat pre-made nectar. So he makes the powder and the water and mixes it all together just by himself. Um, he's a funny little dude. Uh, he came with a great vocabulary before we got him. Um, it wasn't huge, but it was mostly swears. And at first he used to just whisper it into my ears so my husband couldn't hear him. So it was just like sweet little swears in my ear. Um, he says it louder now. Um, one time I wasn't paying attention to him, so he started swearing loudly across the room. Um, he's a funny little dude. I don't know what he's doing in my hair right now. He's just picking stuff out. Um, in the wild, they eat fruits um, and pollen and things like that. So they're kind of a cool, unique bird. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He loves to dance. Oh, there you go. You got a little swear right there from him. So anyway, yeah, he is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I have a few birds that talk, um, and he is one of them. Um, he is actually picking up words from other the other birds I have. Um, so a couple of things that we have taught him that he didn't come with. Um, we watched a lot of bird videos, of course, uh, and a lot of them do kisses. Can you do kisses? Can you say kiss? Kisses? Kisses? No, that's a swear word. Kisses? Yeah, good boy. Good boy, baby. Um, so we actually named him Irwin uh, after Steve Irwin because they're from Australia. Um, yeah, so he has a nice little vocabulary. He says step up really well. He tells me to shut up on a regular basis. Um, he makes up his own words. Um, it sounds exactly like human words, but I have zero clue what the bird is saying. Um, so we're trying to figure out what those mean. But yeah, he's picking up a lot of things. Hey, can we dance? Yeah, he loves to dance. Can we dance and dance and dance and dance and there's three breeders in the United States that actually breed these guys, and weirdly, one of them was bias. Um, when I was little, I would go to the zoos and feed the lorikeet, and they were, they've were they been always my favorite bird. Um, so when I saw that someone was selling one nearby, um, I jumped on that because, like, when is the opportunity to own a lorikeet? I don't know, but I love him. He is the best, one of the best decisions I've made. Um, hi. Uh, yeah. So these birds have the weirdest little tongues. Um, I wish I could get one. Woo! close up for you, uh, but it's so that way they can get the nectar out of flowers and to really dig into soft fruits. Um, but anyway, he likes to stick out his tongue and lick you, um, often near your eyes. Or, yeah. Um, it's really awkward, um, but they're really strange tongues. All right, the last animal I'm going to show you um, is kind of a unique animal that a lot of people don't have. Uh, what you probably think I'm holding is a hedgehog, and you are wrong. Uh, is actually a lesser tenrec. Um, it's also called the hedgehog tenrec for, for obvious reasons. Um, so this is an example of convergent evolution. Um, so these guys, unlike hedgehogs, are, are uh, arboreal, so they actually climb. Um, she's lazy, so she doesn't do that. I've never seen her do that, except for when we first got her. But um, yeah, so she sleeps a lot. Uh, kind of acts like a, a hedgehog in a lot of ways. Um, a, lot of, a big difference, though, um, is their teeth. 
Um, so these are actually related more to elephants um, than they are to rodent or hedgehog-like things. Um, so they kind of have tusks right in their mouth. So if you get bit by one, it really hurts, and I haven't bit by her. Um, her name is Pear because she's a prickly pear. So let me show her to you. So if you look, they have a little bit of a different face and different claws. Um, they use those for climbing. Um, so she mainly eats bugs. Um, she doesn't eat her um, cereal quite as much. So these go into torpor um, during the colder months. Um, so it's kind of like hibernation. They really slow down um, and they don't eat a lot. And then once the warm weather hits, um, they, you know, wake up from their slumber. Um, she's done this uh, every year since we've had her. She's very sleepy. We just woke her up. It's not nighttime yet. They're nocturnal. Um, so she is not liking that I woke her up from her nap. So tenrecs are also a longer lived species than hedgehogs. Hedgehogs only live about four years. Um, this can live up to a couple decades. So um, it's actually kind of a cooler species. I think they smell less than hedgehogs too. Um, I actually recommend them more than hedgehogs. I do have a hedgehog, but um, yeah, which I love to death, but uh, yeah, she's getting older. Well, I know this one I'm going to be with for a while. So I hope that you, you know, stay and enjoy my channel and stick with me through the years. Um, I'm just doing this for fun and education. So thank you for watching through this video um, and I hope to see you soon. Like and subscribe. Okay. Why do you keep trying to leave when I'm trying to talk about it? <laughs> All right, so the first of many pets that I'm going to show you on my channel is Ace. He is a Blizzard Blue Squiggly Tegu. All right. Um, I have no idea what he said. Yeah, you just, you just hammered up with the camera, sir. Sent Oh, buddy, it hurts. He is like doing so well for this camera right now. Yeah, he is. What a good boy. He's probably pooping all over my hair. Hi. Hi. How's my baby? Yeah. <laughs> she licking me? Why are you licking me? That's weird, man. Or you can even grab your toesies. So hopefully you also have fun and be educated. Again, this is me being awkward, so um, I'm just awkward. Matt's gonna edit a bunch of this because I suck.